when you think of uh, uh, <clears throat> what is mercy, uh, it's the heart going out to misery to alleviate it or to uh, get rid of it. <clears throat> and St. Thomas, the great theologian, points out that the greatest misery is not to be. And so the act of creation is the first act of God's mercy, the activity of the Holy Trinity towards everything that exists. <clears throat> and in fact, a Dominican uh, master of theology who then became a theologian of the papal palace uh, wrote a thesis on that point, that mercy is the first cause of all everything that exists. And he gave it a subtitle from St. Bernard saying, uh, mercy is the causing most cause of all causes. <clears throat> so based on that approach to the meaning of mercy, the great writer Gilbert Keith Chesterton defined mercy as loving the unlovable and pardoning the unpardonable. And so God loving the unlovable, which is nothing, out of it brought everything into being. You can't love nothing, <clears throat> but he entered with his love into nothingness and brought everything into existence. But his highest uh, creature, the human being, rebelled against him, and that is heinous. And yet he forgave. And so the act of forgiveness is even greater than the act of creation. <clears throat> so it's pardoning the unpardonable. And so uh, you uh, probably know the uh, speech of Portia in The Merchant of Venice, where she says, the quality of mercy is not strained, etc. And it ends with, and earth's monarchs are like unto God when mercy seasons justice. So he, he had the perfect theological idea of what true mercy is. <clears throat> um, and then we think of the three great uh, commands that God gives us through his holy word. Be holy, because I, your God, am holy. And be, merc be um, perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. <clears throat> now, people object. The scriptures also say, only God is holy, only God is perfect, so how can we be? Well, by the fact that he gives us a command, it means it's possible. <clears throat> and so the rescue comes with St. Luke, where he quotes it, uh, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. And the scripture scholars say these three commands are all one said in different words. So in order for us human beings to be holy as God is holy, to be perfect as God is perfect, we must be as merciful as God is merciful. Therefore, we have to love the unlovable and pardon the unpardonable. And by that, we bring creatures into true being when you arouse love in them, they, they become alive. When you forgive them, you are better off and they are brought to life too. So that's the great gift of God. Life is being creative and being forgiving. And then we are divine. One final thought and I'll cut you loose. That was beautiful. Divine Mercy Sunday is a few weeks away. What does that mean to you, and what should it mean to us? <clears throat> you know, in the Old Covenant, <clears throat> once a year, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, into the presence of God, the only day he was allowed to do that. And he had to come with the blood, blood of the atonement. That means the blood taken from the animal that was sacrificed for the forgiveness of sins, and he had to sprinkle it seven times on the cover of the Ark of the Covenant and in front of it. <clears throat> now, the lid on the Ark of the Covenant is called the uh, Throne of Mercy or the Mercy Seat. And what does it cover? What does it cover? The Ten Commandments that were underneath it, which were broken by the people. And so the idea was when the atonement blood was sprinkled upon it, God could not see the broken law and he would forgive the sins. And if the priest was in order and the sacrifice was in order, he would enter alive outside of the Holy of Holies and be able to bless the people in God's name 
and that showed them that the sins of the, for that year were forgiven. They would not be chastised. And so that's the meaning of the image of divine mercy. Jesus coming out of the Holy of Holies in heaven where he offered his own blood, his own life for us and assures us now that we are forgiven. And when he came to the cynical on Easter Sunday night and eight days later, he says, peace be to you. That means all goodness because you are forgiven. And so the whole idea of the feast is to re receive that forgiveness. It's given, but we have to accept it. And the Lord gave the great promise through Sister Faustina that whoever goes to confession beforehand, because everybody cannot go to confession on Mr. Sunday, it's impossible, but receives Holy Communion on that day, will have all sins and punishment forgiven. It will be in the same condition as we were at our baptism. And it's a baptismal grace. And it's possible people contest it, but they don't know the workings behind it to show that this is true. So this is greater than a, per, uh, than a plenary indulgence, which only forgives punishment for sins already forgiven. This forgives sins, and that demands an explanation too. Because um, as the Pope's explained in the past, it's too long to get into it over here. Uh, so it is great, and it's, since the whole message of Divine Mercy through Sister Faustina is to prepare the world for Christ's return, He's got his church, which is his bride, has to be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And in this way, we have the church prepared for the return of the Lord, which according to uh, the revelations of Faustina is in a way imminent. Uh, but it's the sacraments that hasten the day of the Lord's return, as the scripture scholars point out to us. Thank you so much.